Hello everyone. If we look from the beginning of this chapter, we had learned many of the amazing concepts in this chapter. We had seen that a earth is a big huge magnet. Then we had seen that magnetic field and current are linked in the Oersted experiment. Later on we had seen that how a force acts on an electric conductor if it is placed in a magnetic field. Then later on we had find out that current can be produced by moving a conductor in a magnetic field and it laid the underlying principle for making the electric generator. Now we know that electricity is produced in very big generators in the power plant and then it traveled to our homes by thousands of kilometers long transmission lines. So let's see that how it is being distributed in our homes after it comes to our main meter. Now we know that we have two different types of appliances, one which need a lot of current like the air conditioner or the geyser. Then we have some small appliances like the fan, bulb or your tube light etc which needs small current. So these two types of appliances are there. So we have two different types of lines that are coming from a meter to the appliances. One is the 5 amperes line, next is the 15 amperes line. So 5 ampere line is used to connect the fan, bulb or tube light the appliances which need small amount of current but for the appliances which need large amount of current like air conditioner or geyser these are connected to the 15 amperes line. Now we had studied series and parallel combination of the appliances in electricity. So have you ever wondered that how are appliances connected to these two lines? Are they connected in series or are they connected in parallel? And what is the reason that we connect them in a particular fashion only? Now let's try to find out that which connection is good for our appliances, either it is serial or parallel. So let's assume that we are connecting them in series first. So we had connected them in series and now let's assume that we need the fan and the tube light and we don't need the bulb right now. So let's switch off the bulb. Now what will happen? Now since bulb is not working, so fan and tube light will also not get complete connection and current could not flow through them. So they will also not work. So this is the problem with series that if we don't need one appliance, then rest of the appliances also don't work. Or if one appliance get damaged, then, then also the other two appliances cannot work. So we connect them in parallel fashion. It's like this. So if we don't have to use the bulb now, so we can simultaneously use tube light and fan since circuit is being completed and current can flow through both of them. So all our appliances are connected in parallel fashion. Now electricity can be dangerous as well. So to make it safe, many of the safety precautions are done in the electrical supply. Now this is for the safety of you and of the appliance you are using. Now you might have remembered that when you touch an electrical appliance, let's say a washing machine or an oven, the moment you touch it, you withdraw your hand. What is the reason for that? You get an electric shock and due to that you withdraw your hand. So there is a reason behind that. What happens is this machine has live wire connecting through it. So if some wear or tear happens on that live wire, some of the charge get leaked out on the metallic surface of that appliance. So what happens it the charge gets stored and when you touch it, the moment you touch it, the charge flows through your body into the earth. Now this doesn't happen when you are wearing shoes or you are standing on a wooden stool. It only happens when you are on your naked foot. So what happened, the charge get a way to flow into the earth. So 
your body acts like a conductor and charge flow through your body. Now you will not get an electric shock if current has an alternative way to flow into the earth or it is not stored on metallic surface of that appliance. Now to ensure it, a wire is connected to the metallic surface of that appliance and that wire is taken into the earth by digging a hole in the earth and filling the hole with salt. This is to ensure that we get an alternative pathway for the current to go into the earth. Earthing is done for your own safety. Now for the safety of the appliance, one more precaution is applied to the electrical supply. Now suppose that there is an overloading or a short circuit happens which cause a huge amount of current to flow through the appliance. Now in this case, when huge amount of current is flowing through the appliance, the appliance can damage. So to avoid this damage, one small little thing is applied to the electrical supply. This is known as fuse. Fuse is nothing but a small piece of wire made up of tin and lead alloy which has high resistance and low melting point. Now when a large current will flow through this fuse, this lead tin alloy wire, what will happen? Since its resistance is high, a lot of heat will be generated through this fuse. And due to that heat, since this has a low melting point as well, so the wire will melt and hence it will break the circuit. So this is how the fuse ensures the safety of our appliance. Now in case of huge currents, it breaks due to high resistance and low melting point and cut off the circuit and hence a appliance is saved from the high currents flowing through it. If you had seen the switch of any of the appliance, you must have found out that it has three pins. One is a bit long and thicker and rest two pins are small in size. So what is the reason behind it? What is the reason that one pin is longer and thicker and rest two pins are smaller in size? There must be some reason behind it, right? So yeah, there is a reason behind it. The thicker pin is for the earth wire. This is to ensure that every time you plug in the socket or take it out, the earth pin is the last pin which gets connected to the socket. This is to ensure that the extra charge which gets stored on the metallic surface of the appliance flows through the earth pin into the earth. Now the rest two pins are one is for the live wire and the other is for the neutral wire. Now three color wires are always used for connecting through these three pins. One is the green wire, other is the red wire and last is the black wire. Why is it so that we always use these three colors only to, for these wires? There is a reason behind this too. This is to ensure that you connect the right wire into the right pin. Now the red always shows the danger signal. So we had given red color to the live wire since we don't have to touch it because if we touch it then we'll get the shock. So red color is given for the live wire. Now for the neutral wire black color is given because black is a neutral color. Now lastly, green color is given to the earth wire so that we can easily find out that in which plug we have to plug in the earth wire since this is also an important point of safety for any person. So these were all the concepts which we had to study for this chapter and now you can try and apply these concepts in some questions. And now I suppose you are pretty much familiar with the whole electrical supply that works in our home and also you are familiar with all the safety precautions that are provided for the safety of us and the appliances we are using.